you. I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. Brian, pleased to meet you. Thanks. For when the door opened, I just thought, oh my god, oh, I could yeah. end up like that. <laughs> One thing that happened with me, I became a couch potato. And the more I would eat, the worse I would feel, which led me to comfort food until finally I ballooned to this size. Yeah. It's like having three 200 pound people on your back every day. I can't stand to take a shower anymore. I have to have help to get dressed every day. I can't wipe my own backside. My wife has to help me with that. There's nothing more humiliating as a person than that. I'll suffer from sleep apnea and have to wear a uh, BiPAP at night just so that I don't die. I'm to the point where I don't care what the number on the scale says. I just want to be normal. Yeah. I just want to be normal. Like you, fast food has become a part of daily life for Brian. And to give his guest a taste for portions USA style, they're heading for lunch at one of Brian's favorite American joints. Are you ready to order? I would like um, a pound of beef brisket for us. Okay. Two sausage links, a half pound of pulled pork, three quart sides, macaroni and cheese, a baked potato casserole, and baked beans. And the baked beans, is that it? That will be all. Hugh might be taken aback by the size of Brian's order. Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> but when the barbecue banquet arrives, it proves too hard to resist. Oh baby, now I thought, yeah. <laughs> Dig in. The portion size, it's enormous. But I know for a fact I'm going to make a big dent in it. <laughs> <laughs> Other than food. <laughs> The next day, and Hugh seems to have forgotten the real reason he's been sent to visit Brian. He's getting a taste for all things American. I believe the Americans like donuts. Oh, those look great. Happy breakfast. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, God bless America. <laughs> but Hugh's blossoming love of the American way is about to get shot down. Unbeknown to him, Dr. Christian's been keeping a watchful eye on his time with Brian. I hope this will really shock Hugh, um, and I hope that Hugh will decide this is not the life that he wants to lead, and he'll make the changes that are so, so necessary. He's stepping in to see how Hugh's getting on. Come in. Can he get Hugh to see the seriousness of Brian's mistakes? Hello. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Right? Yeah. I thought I'd, um, you know, just pop in and say hi. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, please get So, Hugh, tell me, how's it been? <laughs> um, yesterday, Brian introduced us to uh, the USA portions. <laughs> Were you competing with each other? No, no, no. Didn't get competitive out of this? No. You managed to pack away as much. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it all went. <laughs> But for Dr. Christian, the bad eating habits are no laughing matter. Brian, what sort of problems are you getting already with your weight medically? Uh, I take a whole load of medicine for different maladies. Can I have a look through them? Yeah. Anti-diarrhea, that yes. does what it says. It helps me not go to the bathroom all day at work so that I don't have to go through the shame. Ah, oh, gosh, right. So you take them to kind of bung you up a bit? Yeah. Blood pressure pill. Another blood pressure pill. Yep. Another blood pressure pill. Yeah, oh, yes. Hydrocodone. Yes. So this is a pretty hardcore painkiller, really. Yes. Do you take that all the time or just occasionally? Um, I'm supposed to take it all the time. With Brian's health issues laid out bare, Dr. Christian wants Hugh to grasp that with his current eating habits back home, he's heading in the same direction. An average guy needs about 2,000, 2,500 calories a day. Do you know how many calories you are eating on average? Absolutely not. At the moment, you're getting through seven or 8,000 calories a day. I just had this overwhelming feel of guilt because I've probably been blaming uh, bereavements and different things and something as simple as a calorie counting, I could have been saving myself all this sort of hassle. I think both of you guys 
kind of use food for comfort. Yep. Dr. Christian wants both men to go away not thinking about what they're eating, but thinking about what's eating them. Although you're a little bit older than Brian, you're certainly not as bad off as he is from a health point of view. You know, there is absolutely time for you to turn this around and sort yourself out. Every time I'm at the doctors, I'm, I'm now starting, they're, they're talking about the diabetes, there's the, the sleep apnea, and, but the thing that you're sort of reassuring me is that the, there is a reverse to it. There is, yeah. yeah. This is now a kind of change for life. This is going to be a healthier year. Yeah. Or a healthier hue. <laughs> you're, you're like the pun. Um, don't give up your day job, <laughs> Right, <laughs> give me a bath. <laughs> Woo! Oh, right through the wickets. Scotland won. <laughs> <laughs>In the UK, Dr. Christian's in the feeding clinic, ready to shock Hugh and Lindsay into healthy eating by seeing each other faced with their ridiculous portions. But before the banquet begins, he wants to discuss their eating habits. You're eating about 550 calories a day. I mean, that's sort of what a baby might eat. And it's probably the lowest calorie consumption I have yet seen for any adult. And this is all quite recent, isn't it? Sort of the last three years, um, I noticed a little bit of weight dropping off, um, but the last 18 months it's been really sort of dramatic in the changes that I've noticed. And what do you think started all that off for you? I really don't know. Not sure at all. Well, what I'd like you to do whilst you're here is really have a think about what, where this could have come from because I'm really concerned for you, actually. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you again. We talked a bit in America about eating and filling a sort of emotional gap. Have you had any more thoughts on that since? I don't know whether I got in to the situation where I was blaming losing two people so close together. A lot of people react in this way, and so the food is the comfort, and if you're bored or you're missing something or you're lonely, you eat. And it's perfectly understandable, but it's got you into the mess that you're in. But I'm in a mindset now to get rid of this weight, to get myself down to a, a, a healthy sort of Hugh McIntosh. Dr Christian hopes Hugh and Lindsay will be kick-started into a healthier way of eating by watching each other wrestle with their terrible portions, starting with breakfast. One banana. That's a cereal with milk and obviously a lovely cup of tea. Hugh's breaking Lindsay in gently before he hits her with his colossal snacks later. But even his healthy breakfast is a big ask. Really struggling with your breakfast. Can't stomach it. Hugh, however, only has liquids to keep down. A cup of coffee. So what about foodstuffs for, for myself? Nine times I've said ten, there's nothing. Just a cup of coffee. <coughs> Next, it's lunch, and Hugh's finally moving on to solids. Well, almost solids. It's Lindsay's childlike portion of mushy corned beef hash. What do you think? That's awful. <clears throat> Lindsay's got to battle it out with one of Hugh's daddy fry-ups. I'm kind of done. It's just far too much. The plate looks overcrowded, and I think that puts me off as well. God help me. <laughs> Two meals in and Lindsay's barely swallowed two mouthfuls. But two hours later, it's snack time. What uh, we've got for you just now is a nice wee bowl of soup, toasted bread, rolls with cold meat, chocolate biscuits, crisps, fizzy drinks. There's a lot of food there for, for one person. I don't know where to put my eyes. Along with his mountain of snacks, Hugh manages to guzzle his way through two litres of fizzy drinks every single day. So Dr Christian's mixing up a day's worth of Hugh's pop to make him think twice about the health hazards of what he's knocking back. So we're going to start off carbonated water. The first flavouring is stuff called citric acid. Stick your finger in there and have a taste of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Something wrong? 
that is the tangy flavour that you like, admittedly slightly more concentrated than you're used to. And the next flavouring is something called quinine. People who have too much quinine experience absolute real havoc with their blood sugar levels. So the next thing we put in is caffeine. In it goes. And there's two main sweeteners in this particular fizzy drink. There's aspartame and acesulfame K. And then finally, we're going to add the colour. E110 or sunset yellow. E124, this is called Ponso 4R. It's in America on the banned food list. So what do you say? Do you fancy a swig? I don't think so. Gone off that suddenly, have you? Suddenly. How oh, funny that. Most fizzy drinks also contain phosphates, which have been linked to age-associated health problems such as chronic kidney disease. Any ideas what this is a picture of? Cooked chicken in a butcher's window. That's kidneys. Nice deep colour, nice size, healthy pair of adult kidneys. This is a pair of diseased kidneys. You can see straight away there's a total colour difference. And they're really quite big compared to normal healthy kidneys. Yeah. There's no going back from this. Kidney failure, once it's reached a certain stage, is only treatable by either dialysis or kidney transplant, and they don't come around too often. Very well in, yeah. Should it happen to you, there's probably only going to be one cause, and that is obesity, and that is in your hands. Looking at the diseased kidneys was absolutely awful. It just seemed like something out of a Frankenstein movie. Really, be 